Welcome to Drinks Coach. Yes, back home. This is the third in a series of uh, little vignettes on my love for Mid Wales. Lowercase Vine Sack or lowercase Drinks Coach UK to contact me about the show. Um, sorry it's been a couple of days late. A um, lot of travelling. A lot of things happening. Lockdowns coming back. Um, but had to do a lot of changes and stuff with clients and so forth. So anyway, here we are uh, making up for it with Welsh Part three, um, it's occurred to me that I'm not doing enough beer on the show, so I thought I would uh, highlight a couple of uh, my favourite breweries, um, again, from, from where I've been uh, on holiday for a week. Uh, and also to, to give a shout out to a couple of other important friends. Um, you'll remember that I did a wonderful um, piece, or a thing I was very proud of, um, about Welsh Mountain Cider, one of my first shows. If you just put in Cider, Drinks Coach UK, it'll come up. Um, well, we've got the latest offering from... Uh, Haver and uh, Bill, uh, they've been a victim of their own success, frankly, uh, and they literally have almost no side left to sell. And the fact that they keep it for three to five years before they sell it uh, means that they can sort of rest easy for now. Um, but they have kept some very, very special ciders. Um, so you can still go on Welsh Mountain Cider website, which will be below, um, and you can become a member of their club. Um, there's probably only about 20 or so spaces left, but you can decide how much you, bet you spend and they will send you three, six or 12 bottles uh, I think uh, monthly or quarterly. I'm not sure how it works precisely. Um, I'm privileged enough to go out there and drink it with them. But um, uh, I think it's a wonderful experience. If you like really, really great, natural, um, proper cider, uh, I've never tasted better in the world anywhere. Uh, and you'll get the opportunity at Christmas uh, to try some ciders they made back in 2013 and 14, which are only just reaching their peak, believe me. Anyway, so let's go back to beer. Um there are a lot of really, really good breweries in Wales. I know that a lot of people know that. Um, I think about the beers I grew up drinking, like Brains and Felon Fail. Um, there's lots of others. Um, uh, and also on the Hereford border. I'm not sure if it counts, uh, but uh, uh, there's some beautiful beers, Butty Back and HPA and lots of stuff. Anyway, um, the, more recently, uh, there's been great success by some of the more recent craft beer entrants into... I hate that phrase, um, into the beer scene in, in Wales. Uh, Tiny Rebel famously has done incredibly well. Uh, won Champion L with their Kutch a while back. Uh, also, there's a uh, lovely American lady and their team who tried to get sued by Boss Clothing, but Boss Brewing down Swansea. I'm not sure what they're called now, but making incredible beers and very good dark beers, in my view. Um, so let's concentrate on two other breweries. Um, I was staying near a place called McCuntneth, which is just south of a place called Dogethley. And Dogethley, which is actually spelt in English Dolgalau, um, is just by Cader Idris, one of the great, uh, the pony walk is one of the great um, Snowdonian uh, National Park walks. And Dogethley is an old um, slate and mining town, which is quite beautiful. Um, Stephen and Prue, um, who make the wines, at, uh, the beers at Cader Ales, uh, very senior solicitors. In fact, Prue's a judge. Uh, and Stephen, very, very senior in the Law Society. Uh, they just, I think, got fed up with the rat race a little bit and just wanted to do something a bit more handsy, a bit more creative. Uh, and a few years back now, six years, am I guessing, um, they produced Cadda Ales. So we've got two to try here. We've got the TPA and the Red Bandit, which is their sort of like their house pour. It's a ruby bitter, which is absolutely delicious. But let's try this again. Let's start with the first one. TPA uh, called the Talalin Pale Ale. Talalin is a railway line that goes from Tawin just by the seaside near Abu Dhabi, which is a very beautiful little seaside resort just north of the uh, the mouth of the Abba, um, and goes used to go up and take the slate up and down the mountains uh, and the railway. I think some of the money uh, from this beer actually goes towards helping them uh, keep their, their choo-choo train going. But um, I understand, like the Festiniog Railway, it's like all very Ivor the Engine in Wales, and so do do choo choo very nice. Um, and uh, uh, this is the, the paler of the beers that he makes, and I'm very fond of it. Um, it's got a nice um, citric um, hot bite to it. And it tastes. I think it almost tastes better out of bottle than it does on draft. This beer. Um, it's so refreshing. It reminds me stylistically a little bit more malty, a little bit more hoppy, but sort of along the lines of the classic Shepherd Neem style of beer. Um, reminds a bit of old school Bishop's Finger and Spitfire and that sort of thing. Um, but it has a bit more midway, a bit more body. Bloody good beer, that. TP8, that's number one. Number two, Red Bandit. 
What's that? Cara Cock. Cock is Welsh for red. Before you get any funny ideas. So it's a ruby beer, this one, the Red Bandit. And this is the first one I tried from them. Um, thanks again, by the way, to Eurobruiser for all the stemware. I've got loads of uh, Stiegel glasses sent to me, which is very helpful for the show. I need to get more of a pour than that. Get more of a glug. There we go. Get some air out of it. You can see it's much darker. See that? It's just a very sessionable mid-colour ale. Almost brown ale. Has a lovely sweet caramelised back note. There's a nice um, hop groove going on. I think they use some special hops, remember? Uh, Bramling Crosses. Bramling Cross is a hop which they describe as giving it spicy berry aroma. Yeah, it was almost like that. It tastes almost quincy. Um, oh, it's a nice bit to be sitting by the fire watching the stars. It just reminds me of how much fun I was having last week. Well, here's to winter. Here's to lockdown. Here's the second spike. At least we've got a couple of uh, beautiful nights under the stars in Wales. Mm. Moving on to... <laughs> I love this brewery so much. My favourite hoodie is from these guys. <laughs> Feel very Welsh running around with a hoodie and combat trousers on. Um, this is the Purple Moose Brewery, which started up about 2005, I think it was. 15 years on the go now. Have a cult following, but not only that, they've produced... I think I think it's one thing to be a very, very good brewer, but it's another thing entirely to produce a modern classic. A beer which almost is more famous than the brewery because everyone wants it when it comes on draft. I remember... Um, when Jiper came on, for those people who remember when Jiper was first made, um, people actually used to just flock from literally miles around to our local pub and uh, a, a killed a kid about, I think it was like 280 pints, would last a couple of hours because people would be trying to find out where this beer was being served. And um, I think Purple Moose have a couple of beers that, that are in that category of classic legends. And these are the two. First of all, this which was Champion Ale. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, Champion Ale. Uh, what year was it? 2015. Um, became runner-up Champion Ale anyway. Uh, this is called Glass Lynn. Glass Lynn Ale. Uh, this brewery is in Port Maddock, which is up the Welsh coast from Aberystwyth. A decent hour or two's drive, an hour and a half maybe, because um, it's all very wiggledy-piggledy, but beautiful. Drive past Harlot Castle and everything. Um, and it's right next to Port Merion. Uh, Port Mary, for those people who remember the amazing sci-fi series from the 60s, The Prisoner. This amazing multicoloured sort of baroque nightmare of, of, a, of a set, which was actually supposed to be a livable uh, place. You, it, it's the most extraordinary bit of architecture on the side of Wales. Um, and uh, they filmed all sorts of films there, and there used to be a, um, a dance festival there, I think, as well. Anyway, this is just around the corner. So there's a lot of reasons to go and visit Port Maddock. Um, the views are amazing. Barmouth, all that whole scenery is beautiful. There's castles. There's amazing architecture. And there's really good beer. Uh, Glasslin, again, a bitter ale. Slightly paler than the ones from Stephen Prue. Although they do make a thing called Cadder Gold, which is pretty special. It's so refined. When I want a summer beer, I want a beer that refreshes and has flavour in equal parts. And that's kind of hard to get in some ways. American-styled, you know, West Coast-style IPAs kind of achieved that by being refreshing and slaking, but also, you know, having massive hybrid hop hits, but being refreshing at the same time. But with the increasing love for the complexity of hops, the ABV has to come up to match that. You have to have the alcohol sweetness to, to cope and... Nothing worse than having a beer that's, that's low in alcohol that's over hopped. I find them really unpleasant. Um, it's like licking that stuff off your, your nails to stop you from biting them. Anyway, <coughs> glass lin. Superb point. I could see myself tucking about five of those away in front of the Six Nations when they come round. Who will I be supporting this time? I don't know. Coming on to my pièce de résistance as far as uh, mid to north Welsh beers is concerned. This is Purple Moose's Dark Side of the Moose. Named, obviously, after the greatest album of all time. Uh, I went to school, uh, the same school that David Gilmour, the guitarist from Pink Floyd, went to. Uh, and I actually had the privilege of playing the drums on stage with him. And at 17, I thought my life was over. I'd died and gone to heaven. Um, last 
summer when we were able to go, my wife and I in Austria watched a lunar eclipse while listening to Dark Side of the Moon while drinking beer and schnapps. That was pretty transcendental as well. Um, here we are. It's a dark beer. This dark beer single-handedly got me back into brown ales and to porters and stouts. It's utterly delicious. The guys down at Triple F uh, in Four Marks, they also made a fantastic dark beer that reminded me of this. I think it was called Rock Lobster, maybe. I can't remember, but that's another small brew that's done exceptionally well in the uh, camera awards over the years. Have a taste of that. Oh, God, that's fantastic. Shame I have to go off and film after this somewhere else. Otherwise, I'd sit here and finish that. That's got to go back in the fridge. Dark Side the Moose. All these beers were bought in the local spa in Wales. I'll put information of the breweries down below so you can see where you can buy this on mail order. They're all not stupid money. I'm sure they all come under £2.50 a bottle, if not 170 180 that sort of thing. Um, but here's to Prue and Steve at Cadder Ales, and here's to the amazing people at the Purple Moose Brewery. Coming on to the last two things. So with the trend of hipsters, anyone with a hair bun, sleeve of tattoos and jeans that are a little bit too tight, everyone's drinking Pet Nat these days. That's a wine that's naturally sparkling in the bottle. Basically, they just put it in a stronger bottle. It's a normal table wine with a bit of yeast. Um, and that's created carbon dioxide, gas, a little bit more alcohol, etc. Um, it's a bit like making champagne without having to pay for the hard bit, which is taking all the crap out. So in response to that, um, Hava has brought out this vintage cider, Pet Nat. Uh, the irony being that all cider is Pet Nat. <laughs> so this is 6.4% alcohol. This was from last year's vintage. Remember, these is a, 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 um, a couple that produce incredible organic beers um, that usually need about three to five years to come round. And I was fortunate enough to visit them last week. And she said, take one of these with you. And this is stunning, beguiling stuff. If you go onto their website, she's got a brand new website. You'll see it below. It's fantastic. Uh, £12.50. Remember, that's for a whole bottle. Okay. Craft beer costs that, right? It's £12.50. That's how much a 70cl of beer would cost. Absolutely amazing. Mm, mm, mm. Quite stunning. Appley, champagne textured, an amazing tightness because it all comes from the Prospect Orchard. There's hundreds and hundreds of varieties here. So there's a steely, crabby quality to it as well, which is quite brilliant. Got a lemony finish. It finishes completely bone dry. Nicest, I think nicest cider I've probably drunk this year. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, one more thing to try. Mm. Fantastic. Okay, where are we? Got a glass. Thanks to Annie who let me stay on her land in her wonderful yurts. I'll put the details below about Annie's land. If you want to stay somewhere where they've got hot and cold running water, showers outside, yurts up the side of a mountain with a view of the whole of Snowdonia National Park. And she does a pretty mean line. I'm serious about this. This beautiful line in mead, black currant wine, and this, which was last year's bumper crop of damsons, damson wine. Yeah, one bottle of this will get both of you comatose for the rest of the night. You don't need any heating. This does it for you. Right? So thank you, Annie, Hava, Bill, Stephen Prue. Sorry we didn't see you this time. And the people of Purple Moose. See you next time. Thank you.